management exists. Management exists in every walk of life. You take a, a bunch of kids, you put them in a backyard, you give them a football or a soccer ball, and management exists. Somebody's going to manage, somebody's going to uh, create the rules, somebody's going to say this is what's going to happen. Management exists. Whether in the backyard or the boardroom, management is active. Whether leading people, projects, or processes, management is hands-on. Whether the overall objective impacts many or just a few, management is invigorating. The avenues to achieve a management role are as numerous as its rewards, as we'll discover today on Degrees That Work. Can you double check and make sure they're on their way to Volunteer Stadium so we can get them here as soon as possible? Sam Rank is gearing up for one of his most important moments of the year. All right, perfect, thank you. The Challenger Exhibition Game at the Little League Baseball World Series is an annual event dedicated to kids facing developmental or physical challenges. The ages and abilities of the players vary, but one constant is their love of baseball. As director of the Challenger Division and league development manager for Little League Baseball and Softball, Sam is ultimately responsible for this game, which celebrates and markets the Challenger program to a public television audience and viewers watching on ESPN3. It's really turned into our showcase event to put the Challenger division out there in front of the world and say, hey, this is what Little League does. This is really part of our mission. This is very true to our mission. And it brings additional exposure to the program. Well, at the same time, and perhaps most importantly, providing a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the players and the coaches and the parents on those teams. A year of planning is about to make dreams come true for members of the Lafayette, Louisiana and Elkhart, Indiana teams who have traveled to South Williamsport, Pennsylvania and Little League's Volunteer Stadium. They are representing more than 30,000 kids worldwide who play in the Challenger division. And I look at my role more as being a coordinating role and making sure everything that was done that needed to be done got done. While in high school and college, Sam worked for Little League as a tour guide in its museum. He planned for an information technology career, but found himself attracted to management. I'm a big picture person. I love the opportunity to sit down, take a look at a project or take a look at a challenge and try to come up with a solution to it. And that's really what management is. It's being tasked with something to do and having the ability and the autonomy to go ahead and work with other people to put together a solution to that problem. Especially in today's workforce, and today's work environment, managers are going to be active and managers are going to be involved in actually accomplishing the task and getting out there, being hands-on, working with other people, and implementing the, the solution to the task that's put before them. Sam's solution for his education was an easy one. He switched his major from IT to business management. After graduating with his bachelor's degree, Little League hired him full-time as league development manager. The organization gave Sam responsibility for the Challenger division about a year later. With the Challenger division, I actually work primarily with our existing programs to either help them improve the, their Challenger programs that they're already offering or work with them to start Challenger programs in their league. Right now, out of our about 7,100 programs, about 1,000 of them offer the Challenger division. So we have a lot of room for growth. However, not a lot of time for the Challenger exhibition game. The contest can't exceed an hour due to television coverage and the remaining Little League World Series schedule. The U.S. and international championship games are set for later in the day next door at Howard J. Lomity Stadium. Sam must ensure the Challenger game stays on schedule. Like his other management responsibilities, it's a collaborative task that he embraces. I don't have anybody that necessarily reports to me, but I have an area that I've been tasked with to manage and to come up with solutions to implement to accomplish the organization's goals in that area. We're just about set. There's nothing that's as fulfilling as when you sit down in that project, you work through the project, you work through the task, and you get to the end and everything's been managed effectively and you see what you set out to do accomplished. Third base side. Big throw, throw to first. Boy, that's great. Look at him motoring. He's Mr. Motorman.
Like Sam Rank, John Karupas doesn't have employees who report to him, but he is a manager and a mobile one at that. My car is my office. I've never been the type to sit behind a desk all day and uh, certainly not in front of a computer all day. I've always wanted to get out and be with, you know, in contact with people. Today, John is about 60 miles west of Philadelphia in Shillington, Pennsylvania, fulfilling his role as one of 22 consumer experience specialists nationwide for Ford Motor Company. John is paying a follow-up visit to Thomas Dano Ford. It's one of 15 dealerships in a three-state region that he monitors to help enhance customer satisfaction. I'm tasked with improving the customer experience uh, at our dealerships. It's a management job and management, you know, the management of time and uh, resources. And what I did was, here's your last three months, November, and here's your three months. Management is really um, an individual that is setting standards, that is providing feedback, that is giving direction, and that is, is um, trying to find the win-win between the employee who's doing the work and the organization that needs to keep itself alive and be competitive. Dr. Eric Bergstrom conducts management training and leadership workshops for workforce development and continuing education at Penn College. He has more than 20 years of private industry experience in human resource management. A manager does both those things. They are serving the, both the employee's interest and the company's interest, and are balancing those two and allowing those two to coexist. That's what a manager does well. When first assigned to a dealership, John typically spends several days observing all processes at the facility. That time helps him identify areas that need improvement and generate recommendations. Subsequent visits, coupled with data drawn from surveys and sales figures, evaluate dealership progress. At Thomasano Ford, John meets with the service manager, service writers, and sales manager to review the latest customer satisfaction survey results and to solicit their input. I need their feedback and I need their insight as to what's going on. I, you know, I, I have to pull in all my experience uh, in, in that I've had in the automotive world. John has accumulated plenty of automotive experience since the day he bought his first car, a 69 Volkswagen Bug. He earned an automotive technology associate's degree and worked as a Ford technician for 11 years. He then became a technical training instructor for Ford. You know, a common trait or quality that a lot of car guys have and it just gets in your blood and you just, you know, just find a passion for cars. There's something about them, you know, it's the smell or the noise or the speed or what, but. John also has a passion for advancing his career. That's what led him to Pennsylvania College of Technology and its automotive technology management degree. It's one of four automotive bachelor degree majors in the United States accredited by the Association of Technology, Management and Applied Engineering. The others are at Indiana State University, University of Central Missouri, and Farmingdale State College in New York. John completed his automotive technology management degree online while working full-time as a technical trainer. What's unique about it is, is how it takes a two-year automotive technology uh, degree that's you know very hands-on, very technical, and then marries it up with you know, management oriented classes and then produces, you know, a degree that, that sort of says that, yeah, you can kind of do both. The Automotive Technology Management Bachelor's degree is taking somebody who has a trade background and then what we're going to do is we're going to build upon that with additional coursework that will prepare them for various, um, various careers that are related to automotive. Dr. Ron Garner is the developer of the Automotive Technology Management major. They're able to come and apply the occupational skills that they have learned in a context that will help them to move forward. Graduates usually seek business, engineering, or educational positions connected to the automotive industry. We're 
recognizing the technical background and blending it with the academics so that when somebody comes out of here, they're still able to have all the academic skills and rigor that you would find in an academic program, but we're doing it in a context that surrounds the occupational area. That gives them an incredible advantage over uh, somebody who might not might have just uh, a general academic degree. Students that come out with pure academic, sitting in the classroom all the time, have missed the connection that's vital to being competitive, and that is to have the hands-on experience. A student really has to set themselves apart from their peers to be able to be competitive in today's world of work. And the best students are the ones that come out not only with the, the degree, but also the practical experience. The marriage between practical and theoretical experience in the automotive technology management degree facilitated John's career climb. Upon graduating, you know, I immediately got the attention of uh, senior management um, that I was a contender and the uh, doors started opening up for me after that. John became a field service engineer and then a zone manager for four dealers in the Washington, D.C. area before assuming his consumer experience specialist position in March 2012. There's so much potential out there uh, for how things can uh, play out. And I've, I've definitely seen it firsthand myself, but I've seen it with other uh, people that I've worked with. And I've seen it with people that have, uh, like myself, have come out of uh, a, a, a technical degree and parlayed it into way more than that. And as much as you know, you say something like management. There's, uh, there's, there's still a diagnostic and fix it kind of process to it. it you know, you're still tasked with addressing a problem. You have to diagnose that problem. You have to come up with solutions, or at least some potential solutions, and implement them. So the process that sort of takes place within your mind, it's not all that different than what even what you were doing as a technician. John is pleased to inform the management at Thomas Sano Ford that their customer satisfaction scores have improved during the past six months. Like anything, when you see the, the, the fruits of your labor, that's the key. That's always been the key for me. Um, so as long as I'm seeing that, then I'm a happy person. Sam Rank is happy with the progress of the Challenger exhibition game at the Little League World Series. As the one inning contest nears its halfway mark, the game is revealing the essence of the Challenger program for thousands of spectators and television viewers. That's exciting. It just doesn't get any better. Really, it's very true to what our mission is, and that's giving everyone an opportunity to play baseball and softball. Into the outfield and left just over the shortstop. In a moment, Sam will be in front of the camera for a live TV interview. Shifting his focus from preparations to the actual game to advocacy for the Challenger program is something he has learned through experience. Sam, like all managers, has to handle multiple priorities. In addition to directing the Challenger division, he is the league development manager for Little League Baseball and Softball. That role consumes 60% of his work week. It all comes down to time management and setting priorities, being able to organize and being able to see a big picture and break that down and put together uh, the tasks or the steps that you need to do to get a project done. Hi Randy, Sam Rank from Little League. I'm calling to confirm our meeting on November 9th. Little League is definitely the predominant youth baseball and softball organization. We have currently more than twice the participation of the closest competitor in youth baseball and softball. That being said, however, there's more competition. Sam travels the country throughout the year, encouraging youth programs that have expressed interest in Little League to charter with the organization. Really any community, anywhere from a big city like Miami or Chicago or Indianapolis where I've attended meetings to smaller towns. In a few days, Sam will be going to one of those smaller towns, Evansburg, Pennsylvania, a borough of approximately 3,700 people located 70 miles east of Pittsburgh. 
An independent league in Evansburg has inquired about becoming one of the 100-plus programs that join Little League in a typical year. If we can get Evansburg to charter with us, there's other areas around that are going to see what Evansburg is doing. It's also going to draw more leagues to inquire about Little League and give us additional opportunities to grow the program and reach more people. But one of the most important things to me is understanding the area and understanding what that league's concerns are about the Little League program or what drew that league to Little League. So in early phone calls, I try to let the league that's inquiring talk to me about their program. For the Evansburg meeting, it's a smaller community, and I really am going to focus on the value added that Little League can provide to their community, as well as the opportunity that the children in the program can have to participate in something that's worldwide or large scale. After conducting his Evansburg research and tailoring his presentation, Sam goes on the road where he will rely on his interpersonal skills. The most important quality to be a successful manager or to have a successful career in management is simply to be able to work well with others and have the ability to communicate with others. You just need those good interpersonal skills. The important thing is to have people that really want to work with people to take the leadership management career path. So I think that every leader has to work with people. Now there are times when those people do not respond, report to them directly. Uh, but they have to be able to get people to work with them even when they're not in charge of the people. Thanks to his experience in school, Sam knew he wanted to work with others in a management capacity. Possessing that sense of self is key for all managers. I think the, the most important thing an individual can develop over the years is to develop that emotional intelligence. To know themselves, to know what makes them tick, not to be um, trying to follow the lead of somebody else and to be a cookie cutter of this other person. You can learn from others, you can value what other people have done, but I think the important thing for an individual that wants to get into leadership and management is they know themselves and believe in their organization. I know I have a good product going into a meeting that's going to sell itself. We use a very low-key sales method. We explain the programs, put the numbers out there, put the benefits out there, and let the community make the decision. Very good, thank you. Thank you. It went really well. We had a lot of good questions here tonight, had an opportunity to really get the information out there and put all the facts out there so they can make a decision. Thought they were very receptive to everything overall and very optimistic about them chartering with us. It's a great feeling. We work hard every year to add a number of programs. Just like he works hard on the Challenger division. Great feeling of personal fulfillment to be able to see what is going on in the office, carrying out out on the field here this weekend. Sam's television interview is complete, but the showcase game still has a half inning to play. Twenty six hundred miles away, Christy Ritchie's day began several hours earlier. The executive chef and director of operations at Greenleaf Gourmet Chop Shop in Los Angeles has been at her Century City restaurant since before sunrise. I love what I do and I have two great teams. Like these are the best kitchen teams I've ever had and they keep me going. They work six days, they work long days just like I do and they keep a smile on their face and that gives me the energy to keep doing it. Every item that's a day-to-day -day, part of the day-to-day -day operations of Greenleaf, I'm in charge of. So we have two. Currently, we have two restaurants. We have a wholesale business where we service over 20 locations, and we have a full-service catering business. All of that is under my realm. Greenleaf specializes in salads, wraps, and sandwiches made with healthy, locally grown ingredients. Our clientele is pretty much everyone and anyone. In Beverly Hills, we have a lot of executives and agents to people who work in the boutiques and salons. Century City, we are surrounded by office towers, so a lot of business men and women. Each restaurant, I would say, probably has about 500 people walk through its doors every day. That doesn't include any caterings that we do, that doesn't include the wholesale program, because that's that program, that's 20 locations a day. Christy manages a staff of 40 between the Century City and Beverly Hills restaurants. 
She didn't envision such a role when graduating in 2002 with a culinary arts associate's degree. When I was in culinary school, it's not something that I thought I would end up being. I thought I'd just be an executive chef somewhere and running my own kitchen, doing my own thing. Never would have guessed that I would be overseeing that many people, that I would be in such a role of expanding a company like this. Or speaking Spanish. The majority of my staff do speak Spanish as their primary language, um, so I speak more Spanish than English in a day. Okay, please. Ya ustedes saben cómo hacerlo, ese, okay? Es, es cierto. Okay, slow. You want to learn how to communicate and you want to make sure that the guy working next to you isn't talking crap about you, you learn pretty quickly. Rather than a management degree, Christy used her two-year culinary education and technical expertise as the springboard for her executive career. Such an approach isn't uncommon. There's a marriage between the technical side and the leadership side that, that can be done can be done right. If you can get into something where you are specialized, like a technology, and you can apply that and also be a leader or a manager, that's even better yet. There are a variety of paths. There are a variety of paths into management. Christie's love of working with her hands and interest in cooking led her to culinary school. And when I went into my first lab, that's when I knew. Um, I felt like it was the right move. Those professors helped to start showing me that I was capable of doing these things and helped to turn me into the person that could then cross the country confident enough to walk into other kitchens and, and go from there. Relying on a college contact and her own fortitude, Christy became a sous chef for a prestigious restaurant group six months after relocating to California. A series of advancements followed before she joined Greenleaf during its startup phase in 2007. Along the way, Christy developed the business acumen and management and leadership skills essential for her role. If I get any more surprises, not cool. For me, when I know that there's a, when there's a goal and I'm so passionate about that, then I like to be in that position of being in control because I feel like I'm the one that can help execute getting it there. So by being the one in charge, I try to make sure that every single day we're getting better and better at it. I think a lot of times people do think like, oh, it's that person's a manager, so they got a desk and they're on phone calls in front of a computer all day long. I don't see my computer that much. I try to get time in in the morning before we get into lunch service, and at the end of the day, after everyone else is gone. I'm the first one in and the last one out. My role as a manager is I'm in the kitchen with the guys, I'm teaching them things every day. If I'm sweeping the floor if there's no one to do it and we need it done. Um, helping to put out, you know, what we call fires, like issues with customers, working a station if someone's out. My role is to make sure everything goes well. Christy does that by leading a devoted staff throughout her typical 12 to 14 hour day. You cannot have great morale, great safety, great process without great leadership. And that means that you may have six different employees but each of them learn different ways, they respond to different things, and they communicate in, in different ways. And so as a leader, you have to tweak your approach and your support, and you have to work through the different motivations for the different people. I talk to every single person differently in my team because every single person interprets what you say differently. Every single person takes things differently. Some people I gotta be very strict with and very stern. And there is no joking around and there is no anything other than the black and white, this is how it's gotta be. And then there's other people where they look like, they're like my kid little brother and I can say, I can joke around with them, I can, you know, um, and they know the balance between getting the job done and what exactly is expected there, but also having fun doing it. No one is the same when it comes to managing people. Today's lunch rush is over for Christy and her employees, but the job is far from done. Prep work continues for an upcoming catering commitment and plans must be made for tomorrow. Christy's day has several hours remaining and she is fine with that. Management is what you make of it. If you want to sit behind a desk and stare at a computer screen all day and you would be happy and content doing that, that's fine. I'm the manager of multiple businesses and I'm running around and having the time of my life because I'm interacting with customers. I have great people that are like family to me. I'm the luckiest girl in town. With the Little League World Series Challenger exhibition game winding down, Sam Rank reflects on his role. 
His duties as director of the Challenger Division for Little League Baseball and Softball differ from those of Christy Ritchie and John Karupnis, but his appreciation for management responsibility is the same. It's great. I, I love what I do. I love coming to work every day, which is really one of the most important things in a job. There's no two days that are ever the same. It's always working with something different and there's a new challenge that's there every day. Young students who hope to be like Sam and one day tackle management challenges should take advantage of current opportunities to develop their leadership skills. There are a good number of jobs that a student can do in high school. All the different clubs and all the different organizations that are within the school where leadership is critically important. So there are opportunities for for students at any age to develop leadership skills to see if that's what they really want to do. If it is, eventually they should be rewarded. What I have found most rewarding of being in a leadership and management role was the ability to help others succeed, to help others find their niche, to help others um, go home at the end of the day and feel satisfied that they did a good day's work. That's a feeling Sam Rank is enjoying. The time challenge facing today's showcase event has been met. Yay! We got the slide. We got the slide. The challenger game fit perfectly into the tight Little League schedule. Television and online viewers experienced the mission of the challenger division, and the participants had the time of their lives. While we have the time element, the number one priority for me was still to make sure that we provided the players and the teams the best experience. It's still about the players. The TV was great, but it was still about giving them that experience. Couldn't have turned out any, any better this year, and hopefully we'll have the same success in future years. It's a very fulfilling experience to be able to take a step back at the end of the day and say we came together as a team, we came together as a group, and we pulled off an event that a group of people are going to remember for the rest of their lives.